In Matthew 13.10, the disciples asked Christ why he spoke to the multitudes in parables. His response, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken, even that he hath. We can see by the verse that the multitudes are not given the kingdom. Multitudes means common people, those who are not rulers or leading men. The kingdom is given unto the rulers. Every kingdom needs qualified rulership. And there are rules to his kingdom. Give. Strong's 3051. Yahab is to place or choose. Those that the kingdom is given to are chosen, chosen, are placed, they're appointed. As the verses continue, the parable of the sower is explained. It says that the word of the kingdom will be snatched from some by the wicked one. And one of the meanings for wicked is slothful, lazy. Lazy is our adversary in this walk, fam. The reason more is given to those that already have is because those who have receive it with exuberance. We take it and run with it. When the truth of the word of the kingdom comes, there is hunger, extreme motivation. You live this word. It is just as important to you as air. We have a desire to know the truth of all things because we understand that we must worship him in spirit and truth. We allow for the destruction of the old thoughts, traditions, religions, and ideals that held us captive in this illusion. We allow for them to be destroyed, to fall away. And we come as little children to the truth because to receive the truth, you must be open to the fact that you don't already have the truth and that and you can't be afraid of wherever spirit leads you on that journey sometimes we're wrong what we've learned most of the time all the time because <laughs> we're in an illusion what you've learned already is wrong it is deception so for us to come into the spirit, the, the truth that spirit brings, we have to be in a mind to receive it and desire it. For those who receive Holy Spirit and allow for the instruction, nothing is more important. Not our spouses, not our children, not our parents, not our jobs, definitely not our jobs. <laughs> there is an unrelenting desire to know the Father, to follow in the way of Christ, to seek God as scripture calls us to do with all your heart and all your soul. Please understand that verse is not a metaphor. It's not a metaphor. It is literally all your heart and all your soul. It is a road map to the narrow gate that is Christ. It is possession. Now, some may not like that word because we've seen horror movies where demons have possessed people and we kind of associate that word with these instances however whether it's a demon spirit or the holy spirit it is a spirit and when we are occupied 
and filled by the Holy Spirit. We are possessed by it. Our minds, what happens with possession is your mind stays upon that thing. You are fixed. And our minds, through the blessing of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, are stayed upon the will of our Father. We are his possession, a vessel filled and used by him and for him. We are bound and yoked to his will and live. We live to serve him. All glory to our Father. Family, make straight the way. You cannot be given the kingdom if you don't seek it. And what we're seeking, praying for, is our Father by his will to send his Holy Spirit and lead us into all truth. Show us all things of Christ that we may know our Father. Now a word of preparation. When Spirit comes, it reveals the truth of Christ and it will have no comely appearance because we are being shown all things of Christ. And when Christ walked this earth, when he was here in the flesh, he had no comely appearance. The message he had was not one that people sought after, looked for, because it wasn't appealing. It wasn't something they had heard. It did not attract them. They were looking for more of what they already had because they were incapable of coming as little children. They thought they had the truth already. So just as it was then, he comes in the spirit to tear down the traditions and to lead us away from the popular ideals and teachings of the Sadducees and Pharisees. When he comes in the spirit, it is the same thing, right? The things that we learned thus far of him will be challenged, corrected. And you may be wondering, how can you know if what you know is true? And you should be wondering. You should be questioning because questions leads us to seeking answers. When we ask questions, we seek answers. And this journey is one where we have to be active participants. We, when truth comes, you need to seek it out. And that answer will lie in the experience of him, what he shows you. And you won't question whether or not you've met the Holy Spirit. It will be very clear. He will give you information that is not of you so that you know, so that you can share with others, so that you will have a testimony. You will testify to the truth of him. You will have an experience of him. And with that, you die to this world so that you can live in him, through him, and for him. You will seek him with all your heart and all your soul. But for us to get to that step, for us to be given the kingdom, we must first be ready to receive it. Thank you, family. Thank you for listening. Be blessed.